Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Anos Sinha. I know that probably I'm between your lunch and uh, a great presentation that I'm going to give, so bear with us. Uh, I'm pretty sure that we will excite, the presentation is going to be exciting and you will love what we have uh, to show to you guys. So uh, I'm Anos Sinha. I was born and brought up in Bihar, and uh, I am trained as an electrical and electronics engineer both in India and the United States. Uh, while I was designing microprocessor chips at Intel, uh, my fellow Biharis and my own relatives in Bihar, more than 40 million of them, uh, did not have access to power. And that was bothersome to me and some of my friends. And that's how we started Husk Power Systems back in 2008. Uh, I know there's a lot of young uh, folks here. There are a lot of young folks here. I, I promise this is an exciting sector. Uh, you should all get enthusiastic about it. This is going to create multi-billion dollar opportunities for all of us. With that, uh, the vision of our company is to uh, be the world's largest off-grid or rural utility company providing 24-7 renewable and affordable power to drive inclusive and sustainable growth. The key is 24-7, like you and I are getting in this building, Everyone in this country and other parts of the world deserve that. That is a right. That is not just an obligation that we have. That is a right of everyone. And that is what we intend to solve. It is a 1.3 billion people problem. That's a number that a lot of people here in this room might have heard. The actual number is 2.5 billion people. Uh, in, in the world today, there are about 7 billion people, of which 2.5 billion uh, do not have access to reliable power or do not have access to any power. And the average money that they spend on an annual basis on candles, light uh, uh, lanterns, and other stuff is about $27 billion. That's how much fossil fuel people are burning for no, no good reasons. So uh, a little bit of uh, history that we have. We were, uh, we think we are the first company. By the way, we were the pioneers in the sector of decentralized electrification. Uh, nobody knew this term back in 2007 and 8 when we started. Uh, now it has become a more acceptable term. So <clears throat> anyhow, uh, we have become the first company to deliver 24-7 power by installing or implementing a hybrid system. So we are still maintaining our commitment to 100% renewable energy sources by integrating and synchronizing biomass gasification system and uh, solar PV with some battery backup. The most expensive component in energy source is the battery. There's a lot of research that has gone into uh, 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 solar because it's a semiconductor. It follows that uh, Moore's law. Uh, battery does not. Right? Even with power all that Elon Musk announced, uh, battery is still following a linear uh, decline, which is less than 10% year over year to my knowledge. So that's why we innovated in a way that it becomes affordable for people, and we are delivering our capex or capital expenditure at $2.40 per watt. If any of you follow a company called Solar City in the United States, their cost is very similar to this. So we have achieved a scale that can uh, uh, deliver what a utility company can deliver to people. The value proposition really is to provide 24-7 power to everyone, right? That's what you and I get, and that's what you and I ex expect. In Delhi, if there's a power shortage of, or outage of more than half an hour, it's a disaster. The same applies to, uh, the same framework applies to people in the rural areas. So uh, 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 Mr. Agnihotri was talking about, we started with biomass gasification system back in 2008, that used to provide only six hours of electricity at night time, mostly to households and to some businesses. And the reason at that time was we did explore solar PV system. Solar PV at that time was very, very expensive. Uh, if any of you follow that trend, it used to be four to five dollars a watt peak. Nowadays it sells at 35, uh, excuse me, 45 cents a watt peak, ten fold decline in the price. So that's why we embrace the technology. We, in fact, partnered with a company called First Solar. It's the uh, largest solar panel manufacturing company in the world when it comes to uh, thin film. And uh, we have done uh, that partnership. Uh, with that, we have been able to do or deliver 24-7 power. And as uh, Jadeep was alluding to in the beginning, 
the key is not to have people in this endless cycle of using low power, low energy and get into that poverty cycle forever. To really get out of that poverty cycle, they need to use it for productive uses, right? As simple as fridge, it increases your efficiency because your the, the food that you cook or the fruits that you have, the shelf life increases, right? You are increasing the entire efficiency of the system. Probably it relates to smart city too. We are just building smart villages, uh, probably faster than the smart cities. Uh, so that's the key, right? To promote the productive uses of power. My customers today do not have to worry that his welding machine shop or her ice cream shop is going to be uh, uh, available without, oh, sorry, they will not have power and hence they will lose their ice cream. That's not happening with them. And the kind of customer service that we uh, bring, and I'll talk about that later, is within two hours, without customer calling us, we have an SLA, service level agreement with customers, we'll fix it. Unless and until it's a disaster, right? So Bihar is a flood. If there's a flood, we cannot fix it in two hours. Other than that, we can fix it within two hours. None of the main utility companies that you know of or I know of can promise that, not today. What we have also innovated, as you know, at, I think in the previous session, if you guys attended, somebody talked about transmission losses of 23%. That is just insane, right? In any developed country, the transmission losses are less than 10%. That was not accounting for the theft. If you uh, add theft, that goes up to 35 to 40%. Our transmission losses with theft, transmission losses in our case is less because we don't run lines for too long. Uh, it's less than 10%. We do follow international or global standards. Our theft rate is zero. Because we have innovated in many ways, our transmission lines are non-standard voltage. You cannot tap onto it. Uh, we use smart prepaid metering system that enables us to set differential tariff for daytime and nighttime. I don't think any meter in this country or probably in any other country that I know of in Asia does that. So our solar system is cheaper, right, during daytime. Solar prices have fallen down. Uh, as, you, as you might know, at the central megawatt scale, the solar prices are about six to seven rupees per kilowatt hour. We pass on that benefit to consumers by charging them less during daytime. So if they are drawing energy from us between 9 a.m. and 4 p.m., they are paying about 25 to 30% lower on a per unit basis as compared to nighttime, where if they are using power between 6 and say 10 p.m. So that's what we call a customer service. So yes, we are able to eliminate the theft rate to zero, but also we are providing a service where we are passing on the cost advantage back to people. And as uh, Jadeep was alluding to earlier, we are grid compatible. We do provide three-phase uh, electrical power that can be grid synchronized any given day. Uh, this is just a picture. I just wanted to show you how, you, how I look in Africa. Kidding. Uh, some of my uh, previous speaker talked about different solutions that are available in terms of uh, solar lanterns, solar home system, and diesel genset, of course. Uh, none of them, they're great, by the way, for people who do not have access to anything. If solar home system reaches them, it's great. But if you look at it at energy uh, ladder perspective, which uh, Mr. Agnihotri was alluding to before, uh, uh, excuse me if I la my language, but it's like drugs. Once you get used to it, you're going to have more of it. So electricity promotes that uses in a more productive fashion though, right? So once they get used to better lighting, they want to watch television, right? Everyone has a right to see some kind of entertainment. And once they get used to entertainment, they wipe, uh, they, they purchase fridge, because disposable income in most countries are increasing. So again, uh, uh, what we have as a solution is a utility solution that can be scaled rapidly to serve millions of people. We think husk power alone can serve 40 million people of this 2.5 billion people who do not have access to power, and at a price that they can afford. I talked about customer voice. So we surveyed our customers who are actually getting 24-7 power. The, the, the first goal in the next 12 months is to own more appliances. They w want to buy TV, they want to buy a fridge, they want to buy other things that I think you and I take for granted. Uh, they don't. This is a trend. So the, the red bar that you see at the, at the left 
or on your left is uh, when we were providing six hours of power. So that's where they got into that cycle of, you know, you use power only for basic purposes. But when we started providing power 24-7, you see those uh, uh, blue charts. That's a trend in four months of power converting a mini-grid existing site to 24-7. It has increased more than 50 percent. That's a trend. Most people think they cannot pay. They can if you provide them a quality service that is reliable and they can use it for productive uh, purposes. This is how businesses have increased energy uses. Business people are very, very smart, especially in rural areas. They'll not spend a penny extra if they cannot make two pennies on that, on that penny, right? Their internal rate of return is more than 30%. Uh, uh, that's the trend that we are observing in our communities. The, the energy consumption has doubled in, in over three months because of high quality and reliability of power that we can provide. So uh, I talked about a smart prepaid metering system, right? So I can, uh, uh, using my cell phone, and actually I do get a real-time alert on this, every customer that is connected, I have access to them on my cell phone. And on these smart meters we launched only a year ago, we have only 1,000-odd customers on this, but I know the energy usage pattern on an hourly basis, right? And relating it back to MathWorks, uh, uh, analytics that we were talking about, this is what energy supply and demand management is going to be. I know how these, I can predict almost how this is going to be tomorrow, and that's how I manage my power supply so that it matches and my grid does not trip, right? So that's how proactively we are managing remotely, both the supply side and the demand side. Uh, uh, this is State Bank of India. You can predict, uh, you know, the, the office opens at 10 a.m. and it closes at whatever, 6 p.m. or 7 p.m. Every day, they probably switch on the laptop as they come in. You can see the spike, and then they probably chill out and it, you know, at lunchtime, and then it goes down. So point being, we can predict with high level of accuracy. And in some cases, we have been able to predict when they're going to buy the next TV and when they are ready to buy a refrigerator, right? And that's the power that you get with analyzing data at a granular level and then aggregating it at, at the plant level. So I'm going to quickly skip, but uh, we are supplying to customers who are on the grid. Grid is just not reliable, right? So they might be getting four hours, eight hours, 10 hours. Nobody can predict. If you see the, the quote, uh, it may not be even correct English. Uh, earlier we had government electricity, but they were not providing electricity properly. Everything is good from the time we have taken our solar, so that's for daytime. Uh, we can use fan also. Uh, well, for some reason, some business is working until midnight, and they are happy about that. I, I don't get excited when I'm working until midnight, but good for them. Uh, point being, 24-7 uh, power has created a lot of productive uses that people are very excited about and are willing and ready to pay for it. Right, so our goal is, I'm going to quickly uh, not take too much of your time, our goal is to install 600 sites in India over the next four to five years UP and Bihar, UP has taken a lead in the policy that brings a lot of confidence among investors. So when I'm going to install 600 sites, that will cost me about $50 million. No investor is going to write me a check unless and until the policy is very clear, both from us operating a site, but also when the centralized grid does come, how do we interact with them? Do we have a PPA? Do they buy our assets at, at the book value? Do we get our returns, or do we just operate as is in an exclusive rights fashion for the next 20 years? Uh, and and I'm, I'm going to digress a bit. Government or, or, or multi-pull uh, uh, organizations in this country has a choice, right? And I'll give you two analogies. Uh, one is what China did. China just expanded their coal-fired plant like there was no tomorrow, right? They electrified every single person uh, in the country the result of which is people in Beijing and Shanghai have to wear masks every day. Do we want to do the same thing for India? Perhaps not. Uh, second is a cell phone revolution that happened in Africa, say, uh, 10 years ago. Nobody really had uh, a, a telecom con or telephone connection. Same in India as well, right? If we went with the equivalent of expansion of the grid to expansion of telecom lines, you know, it would have taken another 200 years, right? So it's important to take a leap 
so that we can impact maximum number of people in minimum time. It's like, you know, I see a lot of young people, but people who have kids, you know, in Diwali, if you had only 20 rupees or say 200 rupees for that matter, you have three kids. Will you say I'll give uh, a gift to only one kid because I, I don't have money? Do you want to give gift to everyone? So if you want to solve this problem as fast as possible, we as companies doing these off-grid solution uh, is only complementing what centralized grid can do. And we are complementing in a way that it will not increase the CO2 footprint of this country. The cities that are already close to unlivable uh, includes the city too. Uh, you know, we are not going to expand that to other cities. So it's a great chance for all of us to step up, especially young people, to not let coal-fired plant ex get expanded to the detriment of our future generations. Uh, with that, I'm going to stop. Thank you very much.